Don't worry, folks. You're watching Ringside, and it is Sky Sports. It's Gary. Now we've seen good-looking Gary as a fighter. It's your turn to make your judgment on me as a presenter. Tonight, our first fight is going to be a cracker. We've got a knockout specialist, Neville Brown from Burton, versus Paul Murray of Birmingham. For blow-by-blow -blow commentary, let's go to ice rink, tel ice, the Telford Ice Rink and listen to Glenn McCoy and Ian Duck. Absolutely brilliant. You've passed the audition, Gary Mason. We're all out of a job in future. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Welcome to uh, the South Pole, otherwise known as the Telford Ice Rink. It is absolutely freezing. I've never been so cold in my life commentating on boxing. We've got ice underneath our feet as we await now the introductions from your MC, Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of National Promotions, good evening and welcome to an evening of championship boxing from the ice rink Telford. We welcome viewers this evening live on Sky Sport. Your officials this evening, ladies and gentlemen, are all appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. The first contest this evening, which is in the ring, is a middleweight contest of eight three-minute rounds between introducing in the red corner, wearing the black trunks, from Burton-on-Trent, would you please welcome Neville Brown. Twice ABA champion and one of our big middleweight prospects. And in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks from Birmingham, Paul Murray. At the weigh-in today, Brown scaled 11 stone, 7 pounds, Murray 11 stone, 6 pounds. Your officials for this contest, the timekeeper, Mr. Harry Foxall of Stoke, the referee, Mr. Terry O'Connor from Birmingham. Terry O'Connor, the referee, former Midlands area champion. Neville Brown on the left of your picture is quite a prospect. He's won 14 and lost just one. That was a shock first round knockout by Paul Wesley last July. He's since avenged that on the right, one of the real journeymen of British boxing, Paul Murray from Birmingham. He's 31 and this is his 81st fight tonight. And he's lost 55 of them. So Brown should not on form have too many problems here, but uh, I guess you never know. At least Murray did win his last fight, ending a sequence of 32, would you believe it, defeats. And he's quite a, a cagey sort of fighter. He's been in with a, a lot of good fighters and lost to most of them, but he's, at times he can mess about and hang in there. Although this is going to be a very tough contest. Neville Brown is, is a sharp opponent and hits very hard. Neville Brown, well, it's so cold in here, it really is freezing, but... Uh, Neville Brown, I notice he's got on two pairs of trunks, the bicycle shorts underneath his black trunks. Not on, not on. Murray landing with a jab there. Already we see Murray trying to, trying to use spoiling techniques. And you're trying to obviously not get involved in, in much of a punch-up. I think his best, the best thing he can hope for is to try and just survive this fight. Neville Brown just trying to find his timing with that uh, right hand. Didn't really land uh, too cleanly with it. Murray, who's been a pro now for 12 years, and uh, when he's not boxing by day, he's a self-employed roofer. But Brown, on all known form, really, would be looking here for a quick win particularly on the same bill as his old amateur rival and now stable mate in the Mickey Duff stable, Richie Woodall. In fact, Brown might be feeling secretly that he should be fighting for the Commonwealth title tonight. I think a problem with, with all the fighters tonight is going to be boxing in the ice ring. It's going to take them a little while to, to warm up because it is very cold in here. Brown hasn't slipped into his rhythm at all so far. He missed with about four or five punches in a row there. Murray, of course, uh, despite his string of defeats, is quite knowing by now. He can uh, look after himself in the ring. Once again, Brown struggling really to get his timing. He is, and he's been allowed to, he's missing very badly, and that's because Murray's ducking so low. And as of yet, the referee hasn't said anything about it, but he is, he is going down very low. First round, it's due to go eight. Brown does get through with the left hook. That was about his best punch so far.
that was a, a couple of nice shots and maybe he's just getting his timing now he let up there with a, a good uppercut and come back with a left hook and a right hand he just didn't catch with the right hand but the first two shots weren't bad there's the countdown on the uh, bottom right of your picture just 10 seconds and down goes Murray caught right at the end of the round Bell's going to go any moment and it couldn't have come soon enough although Murray looks okay Welcome back to Telford in Shropshire. Our big fight tonight for the Commonwealth middleweight title and it promises to be a bit of a, a cracker. Meanwhile, Neville Brown, this is the knockdown at the end of the first round. Brown hadn't done that well, but the right hand coming through, I think that was the one that did the damage, left followed up. And Paul Murray from Birmingham was down. Doesn't seem badly shaken up though. Just to remind you, Neville Brown, former ABA champion in the black shorts here. He's just beginning to find his veins. They were too sharp shots he led with a, a straight right hand and then come out on a straight left not particularly hard shots but but effective nice little short jolting shots I think probably what we're looking to gauge here Glenn is how near is Neville Brown to being launched into the championship picture that's right uh, against an opponent like Murray really if he's ready for the, the title shots he needs to be able to get the likes of Murray out of the way he is not a, an easy opponent to fight. He's difficult, he's unorthodox. You know, he, he ducks very low. But these are the sort of tests that Brown needs. You know, he needs to get these men out of the way if he's got any chance of getting into the title picture. Murray is spoiling his way through it so far. Minute gone in the second round. Murray's shown his experience from, from 80 fights with in close, he's grabbing hold all the time. He's keeping Neville Brown off his feet when they're in a clinch. He's moving them about. And that's all the experience that he's learned over 80 fights. Most of them trying to survive the distance. Been in with some good names. He went in with uh, Chris Pyatt. Not only lasted two rounds, Murray. Rocky Kelly beat him in five. And Robert McCracken, another of Mickey Duff's young prospects, beat him in two rounds. He is very much uh, classed as the opponent, in inverted commas. better from Brown nice jab followed it up with the right hand Murray did land with his own left hook but there doesn't seem very much in his punches bit of blood around Murray's nose nothing much to speak of though he's starting to get caught one a few shots Brown's starting to get a little bit of success the way that Murray ducks low is still giving him a little bit of problems but I, I think it's a matter of time before he, he sorts that one out Murray's last fight he won on the undercard of the Nigel Ben Dan Sherry uh, bill at the Alexandra Palace that was against James J Woolley fourth round and it was his first win since 1987 would you believe even well Spurs is right <laughs> on that one doesn't oh and he's got he's him gone. again he's got him again Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> sensible enough to stay down and take the eight count and let his head clear but as Brown beginning to find the range now two more jabs going in and then a hook and Murray is gonna have to take another count here it wasn't really a punch there it was more you know a series of pushes on the back of the head but he's in trouble there and well you thought really then for quite a while towards the end of that round that Murray would not get through the round but he did and um, Neville Brown, after a slow start, seems to be getting a grip on things here now. Brown, he's on the, the force there. He's pushing him back and pushing him back. He's starting to land with shots. And again, it was the same shot as, as the first knockdown. He led with the right hand, came back with a straight left. Not, not the powerfulest of shots, or the, at least they don't look that, but the, the short, sharp, Jordan shots. So Paul Murray down three times already, or taking three counts. I think Glenn was right. That last one did look to be more of a slip than anything else, but it was counted up till five. He's not been severely dazed or anything like that. In his corner there, Pat Byrne, his trainer. Second count, round three. Fought 12 times last year, Murray. Quite a month on average. Supplementing his income, but really truth that is all he is doing it's uh, 
fighters like this that really are kind of the soul of British boxing almost, uh, filling up undercards, providing the opponent opposition for the prospects. It's a tough life, isn't it? It's very tough. And Brown's now starting to get more and more accurate. I can't say he's going that much longer. He's starting to land his shots. Before he was missing, now he's getting them through. And I shouldn't think Murray will want to take too much. Yeah, Neville Brown from Burton on Trent in Derbyshire is looking a lot sharper now in the third round. And there's a feeling about this that the end may not be too far away. Could be wrong. He's landing more and more inside there before Murray was, was able to, to grab on. Now Brown is, is beginning to get through inside. From Brown's point of view, of course, it's, um, it keeps him busy, which is better than just... Uh, gym work all the time but you have to say it's not one of his more significant bouts it, it isn't I think the, the best thing that it'll do for him is give him some work and also it's a different style it's a, a different things to solve shaken up by another left hand there Murray feeling the weight of Brown's punches now one-way traffic good right uppercut there from Murray oh left hand the left short one good punch quality punch from Brown and he's down again is Murray and he may not want to know very much more because he was looking at his corner there nine and he gets counted out I think he took the pragmatic decision then that there was only one conclusion he's got other fight nights to come other pay nights and he slips to defeat number 56 very predictably and Neville Brown takes his record to 15 wins and one defeat. 13 of those 15 wins have now come inside the distance, but there'll be much, much stiffer tests ahead. Here's the finish, Glenn. He's, he's now he's starting to land with good shots, and I think it's a, it's a short left hook which gets him. That's a right in the face at the end. And when he went down, we seen Murray look over the corner, and he'd had enough. He signaled he'd had enough. <laughs> Seven seconds of the third round, Paul Murray having failed to beat the count. The winner on the count out, Neville Brown. Gary, as a young fighter starting up, do you <laughs> think that was the that was a performance of a fighter who was aiming towards the top? I think he can go a long way, but what I will say, he's still slightly undisciplined, and that has found him out before. He, uh, I mean, he's lost one fight when he was slightly scrappy and got hit on the chin and went down and got knocked out himself. But I like to see him tie up a little bit more and just sort of be a little bit more disciplined. So do you think he got a little hit a little too much for someone at this stage? For or? someone who, who's had 15, I think it's 15 fights, he should just sort of think a little, be a little bit more tidy. I mean, there's a comparison between him and Richie Woodall because they both fought the same opponent. Brown knocked him out in three. Woodall went the distance with him, and I think we'll see Woodall is a lot more competent than Brown. But Brown will get there. He'll get his chance. And it's said of Brown's chin that it's quite weak. Did you get that impression from that fight? Well, I don't think the other guy was, a, was much of a puncher. But what I will say is if he hangs it out to the wrong guy, he'll get knocked out again. Right.